as everybody else around here. I feel like I've, I'm one of the first people to do that from the city. Yeah. It? So it feels amazing. Yeah. You know, hopefully it'll inspire other people like yourself to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how did you make a name for yourself? What was your first big break? My first... Big break. First big break. Um, I played um, at, um, for Children in Need in Wales. And it was on BBC um, with like Sugar Babes and all that kind of stuff. And ever since I did that, people have like took me a lot more seriously and it's been good from then. Yeah, lucky. I was very lucky to get that. So what were your musical influences when you were growing up? Um, my musical influences were ranged from people like Bob Marley to um, Wu Tang Clan to Lauryn Hill, um, D'Angelo. I listened to a lot of UK stuff growing up. Like I listened to a lot of Wiley and Dizzy Rascal when I was growing up as well, and the Social La Crew and Lamar. I've just listened to nearly enough loads of people, but all that kind of stuff. So, what drew you to music? Um, my mum, oddly enough, like she's always playing music in the house. And, um, when she was pregnant, she said she used to um, put like um, the music on like headphones and stuff like that on, on, on the stuff and whatever she was listening to. And strangely enough, she told me that when I was like a little baby, when I was, I'd respond to what she was playing. Like I'd like, you know, like I'd remember the music she would play to me when I was inside the room, and I'd be just dead nice. After that, so like I feel like I've been in tune with music since I was a kid, and yeah, that's it. I'd like a ring. I got that from someone in the school. It's my cool, eh? <laughs> in pink. What is it about music that like attracts you? Like, what is it? Um. Well, Stevie Wonder says um it's a language that we all understand, and I feel like. You know, spiritually, it's the one thing that if you take it away from anything, music, video, well, not away from music, music away from music, take music away from video games, mu um, films, TV, um, anything, and everything just becomes dead plain and boring. But at the same time, as much as you might try and take music away from stuff, there's music and everything that we do. Like Ben Elshu's taking apart a little thing, and that sounded like little rhythms, you know what I mean? So you could, people make beats out of, like, He's making music right there, you can hear it. Whatever. It's cheesy, but it's music. Music's everywhere. That's what I love about it. What message do you want your music to have? I want my message, the message that I put into music is just to be yourself and do what you love to do. I be what I am. I love what I do. And I want people to take that from my music and think, yeah, I can do what I want and not feel bad about it. Yeah. You recently brought out the album, the new calendar. Mm -hmm. How was that? Well, it was all fan funded and stuff. People bought the album in advance. I'm sure that you, you got one as well, you know. Um, and we made the album under like intense pressures, but now that it's like out there and we're putting it out there, it just feels good. People are saying, oh, I like the your favorite songs, this one, your favorite songs, that one, I like that one. It's like, it's good. What's your favorite song on the CD? High score. High score. Love it. It's on it. It's on it. I like yeah, so what is your favourite album? My favourite album is Miss Education. Yeah. So, um, what is your favourite song on the album? Um, what separates you from other artists? Well, I think the fact that I'm me, and you know, they're them, and like, I can't be them. And I don't try to be anybody else. I just try to be the best. Esco Williams. 
that's ever been around. It was only one, so it seems a bit easy. I am. And you recently worked with Steve in Manchester. I recently did. He came to the school last week. Did he? Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. So, how was that come about? Um, well, you know, we both worked with the same charity. Um, and Carmen were like, we want to do something for Valentine's Day. Because everyone, everyone always thinks about Valentine's Day as the same as if I'm going to get a date and I'm going to get out there. But not everyone's successful in getting a date. And, you know, ev not everyone's thinking about that. But people make them feel like you're supposed to do that. Um, so we tried to make a song that was about, you know, not not about love or not like that, but just about, you know, being there for your for your mates. And we did that and released it. And since then we've been quite we've been in touch and we've been quite cool with each other. Man. He told me that like, you recorded, no, you wrote the song on the Wednesday. You had to record it by Friday. Yeah. 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 We met up for two hours, two two times, and we did wrote the song, then recorded it. It's like snappy. It's yeah. crazy. I've never worked so fast in my life. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, what is on your iPod right now? What are you listening to? Um, what I'm listening to right now, I'm listening to Justin Timberlake's 2020 Experience, an album by Bilal called Love Surreal, and Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City. Have you seen Kendrick Lamar? I sure have. I want to see him in Manchester. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Did the whole album back to back for us? I loved it. Amazing, isn't he? Um, right. That's it. Um, no, actually, hold on. Let's oh. see if I can think of something. Okay. Yeah. Hit me. No, I've gone on. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, how did you enjoy the slide? What was it like? Yes, I loved today. Um, you know, year eight was buzzing. It was great. And um, the school was just going for it. You know, we had some great answers. It seemed like we listened to the message that we were putting across. Not that they understood it. Uh, you know, and they enjoyed the music. So that for me ticked every box. It wins, 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 wins. If I see more of, uh, feedback for the Andy Walker Foundation on the Twitter and Facebook, I'll go to sleep like a happy guy. I know that Elon makes sure that happens. I know that the school will make sure that happens and the kids that were in here today will make sure that happens. So that's that's cool. How do you plan to get the message of Anthony Walker's death across to your fans? Um basically doing what it is that I'm doing. Like we'll do these tours and I'll make sure that like basically anytime the Andy Walker Foundation are doing something else I'll try and pass that on to, to the people. I feel like it's an important thing. Without it, you know, um, things like the Anthony Walker's death could, could happen again. And that could be my cousin, my sister, my, my brother, my auntie. And I don't want I don't want to see that. No one wants to see that. The, but there are people out there that do. So it's making sure that we kind of educate them. Not kind of yeah. yeah? Makes sense? <laughs> Alright, that's it. Lovely Thanks. boxed.